Planning Commission, and I believe it's the 23rd of March, 2021. Uh, if we could have roll call, I'd appreciate it. Definitely. First, we have you, Chair Brathfield. Present. Vice Chair Freeman. Is muted. Sandy, oh no. Sandy's muted. Sandy is a little frozen on my screen. Is is yeah. Looks anyone familiar. having that same problem? Present. Is anyone else have a thing around? I think Sandy's maybe got a little bit of an internet issue. Yeah. Internet? Okay. Maybe I should turn the TV off. Or shoot it. Maybe. Your screen is a little frozen. I see you on there, but. Oh, now it's We're moving. shutting down and just rejoining. That could work. <laughs> Reboot. Reboot Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And to continue with the roll call, we have Commissioner Dawson. Here. Commissioner Fletcher. Here. Commissioner Latasa. Here. Commissioner Millich. Here. And Commissioner Reed. Present. Nobody is absent. Back to you, Chair. Cool. Appreciate it. Going uh, right along, do we have an, an, an agenda item for the minutes? <clears throat> or a public Any, comment? Oh, yeah. well, we can do, yeah, I'm sorry. Let's do public comment before we do the minutes. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> sure thing, Chair. Let me go ahead and share some information about how the public can participate in today's meeting. So we encourage members of the public to join our meeting via Zoom Gov as it is a secure service and will connect you live to the meeting with no lag time. This meeting is also streamed live on youtube.com slash city of Monterey, where there's a 10 second delay and on Comcast channel 25, where there can be up to a 90 second delay. If you'd like to provide public comment, please join the meeting using Zoom or by telephone, making sure to join in time to accommodate these delays. To join the meeting from a computer or phone, please use the link or phone number posted on the agenda located at iSearchMonterey.org. And since the meeting has already begun, you'll find the agenda under the recent tab. To join by telephone, please dial toll free 833-568-8864, then enter the webinar ID, which for this meeting is 161-990-8039. And if you're prompted to enter a participant ID, simply press pound. Detailed instructions for using Zoom are available at monterey.org slash public meetings. And to provide a public comment, simply raise your hand in Zoom or by telephone, dial star nine to raise your hand, then star six to unmute when called upon. All of our public commenters will be muted until it is their turn to speak. And please turn off any TV or computer speakers or simply go into another room while connected by phone as background noise can interfere with the broadcast. Public speakers will be called upon in order of hands raised and the chair has designated a three minute time limit for today's meeting with a countdown timer shown on the screen. We ask that you please stay within your time limit. And let me take a look. Uh, looks like at this point, we do not have any hands raised for public comment, but if that changes, I will let you know. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. <clears throat> now, if we could go to the minutes. Anybody have any comments? I do want to I believe Jennifer, Jennifer has a comment. Yes, I caught my own mistake on the March 9th, uh, 2021 minute. Uh, for the motion block number one under the 223 21 minutes, the count was wrong. There should be four A's, two absences, and one abstention. And I will correct that before uh, sending it through for a signature. Any, if there's no other comments, do we have a motion? Move to approve as submitted. This is Hanson Reed. Second. Thank you. And we have a Reed and, and Mike has a second. Uh, let's have a, a roll call. Definitely. Uh, first, we have you, Chair Rothfield. Yes. Vice Chair Freeman. Did mm -hmm. not come back. I will have to mark Sandy as absent for this, this vote. Um, after that, we have Commissioner Dawson. Yes. 
Commissioner Fletcher? Abstain because I was absent last meeting. Correct. And Commissioner Latasa? Also abstain. Thank you. And finally, Commissioner Reed. Don't I get to vote? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, <laughs> Commissioner Millich. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what are you keep doing? Because <laughs> I'm moving your names around, all these abstentions. <laughs> yes. And Hanson's muted. All right. Commissioner all right, Millich, yes. you said, I said yes? yes already. So great. Okay. So total, that was four A's, one absten absence, and two abstentions. Thank you. Uh, the motion carries. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's move on to item number three, 400 Cannery Row. OK. Hi, my name is Christy Savdo. I'm an associate planner with the city of Monterey. I will be presenting 400 Cannery Row. Let me share my screen here. Okay. Good evening, Chair Brassfield and Commissioners. Um, applicant uh, Jennifer Blevins is requesting a change in use in suites A and C in the Monterey uh, Plaza Hotel. Um, they're requesting approval of use permit 210012 to allow a change in use from a jewelry shop and specialty food market to a bike retail shop with bike rentals and tours. Uh, this site is uh, has a general plan land use designation of commercial and the zoning is visitor accommodation facility. It is located in the plaza on the first level. Um, it's building B, uh, suites A and C. So Jennifer Blevins is the owner of Mad Dog and Englishman Bike Shop. Uh, she submitted a use permit application to provide uh, bike rentals and guided tours for the bike rental shop that's currently there. So just a little bit about Mad Dog and Englishman. Uh, there's, they have stores now in Carmel by the Sea, Mill Valley, Montecito, and now Monterey. Uh, they sell high quality bikes, cycling accessories, and apparel. And um, in a a lot of those locations, they offer um, rentals and guided tours as well. So just a little background, um, the use permit for the Monterey Plaza Hotel uh, allows retail uses in building B. <coughs> why uh, the current use, um, they have right now a retail shop for the um, bikes that was um, issued with a business license. And the applicant has applied for a use permit to allow the bike rentals and guided tours. And with the VAF zoning, um, the bike rentals and guided tours are an accessory use, which requires a use permit. Here's some uh, existing photos. Uh, you can see they do, they are gonna display some of the bikes um, outside, but not within the, the pathway where um, people walk. Here's the front. Uh, and here's just another view. Here is um, another, the other side, and you can see kind of in the windows, they have a display of their products and there's um, a bike, oops, excuse me, a uh, place to lock up your bike here. So the proposed project, as I said, is bike rentals and guided tours. The hours would be from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. With the exception in the summer, they'd be open till 8 a.m. Um, for their lease with the hotel. And the employees would include a shop manager and staffing support based on seasonality and demand uh, between one and six staff members, typically two per shift. Uh, the parking would be provided in the Monterey Plaza Hotel, their hotel parking garage. However, um, many of the employees will bike to work as they have the electric bikes that they provide in the store. Here's the proposed site plan. You see um, suites A and C, and this is the space that they have currently. Um, they store the bikes inside and display them um, outside as well. Uh, this is showing the parking requirements um, with the original use permit. And I highlighted building B, which allows retail. And based on this and the square footage of suite A and C, which is not quite 1500 in 
for um, suite A and C because originally building B included a little bit more. Um, they are required uh, 1.5 parking spaces for the retail use itself. Um, there are other parking requirements in the Monterey City Code. The Cannery Row area requires an employee parking plan. Um, that plan requires approval by the Planning Commission for a change in use. Uh, the plan is required to describe how an occupant will handle employee parking. Uh, the employee parking plan may include an on-site lot. So um, in this case, they're proposing a maximum of six employees at any one time. And they um, have communicated with the hotel, which has and they've indicated that they have uh, parking spaces in the um, hotel parking garage. So just to summarize the required parking for the original use permit, they're required to have two spaces for the retail use and um, an important employee parking plan for the cannery row area requires six spaces so they're required a total of eight spaces uh, the required parking will be in the monterey plaza hotel parking garage and the hotel is confirmed parking is available um, the required use permit findings are the proposed use is in accord with the objectives of the zoning ordinance and the purposes of the zone the use is consistent with the objectives of um, use permits, um, like the findings and the purposes of the VAF zoning district, uh, and that the proposed use is an allowed accessory use with a use permit. The proposed use would meet the requirements of the original use permit and the cannery row um, requirements for parking, which is an employee parking plan. The proposed use and conditions under which the use will be operated will be consistent with the general plan will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare of persons residing or working in the neighborhood or in the area. Um, the proposed commercial use is consistent with the general plan and that is it a, it's a commercial use itself. The proposed use will not be detrimental to properties or improvements in the vicinity. The proposed use will comply with any specific conditions required for that use. Uh, there are no um, special conditions needed for this um, as recommended by staff. Uh, the standard conditions will apply. Staff recommends approval of the use permit uh, to allow a change in use from a jewelry shop and specialty food market to a retail shop that allows bike rentals and tours in building B uh, at 400 Cannery Row. Um, it's my understanding that the applicant was going to join us. I don't, I didn't see her on the line earlier. So I'm not sure if if you had any questions, <laughs> but um, hopefully I can answer those. Any questions? I, I have a question. It's Go ahead. A general question. In your consideration of this um, use permit application, is there ever any um, focus given to the situation on the rec trail in terms of saturation of bicycles and people and the safety and how it's changed? It seems like we have an awful lot of these bike, bicycle rental shops, and I'm just wondering if there's a bigger picture that someone's keeping an eye on here. Kim, can you help address that question? Yeah, uh, um, I'm not sure we have any current bike counts. At one point, we were um, doing that. Um, I would need to check with our traffic engineering division. Um, we have talked about putting up bike counters on the um, recreation trail to try to get a sense of what the total um, volume is on the recreation trail. And obviously peak and time of day is sort of interesting data as well. I think originally that was funded by some NIT projects which were then defunded. So, you know, it's not a bad idea in the future to try to understand, especially as we're moving to multimodal transportation, how many more people are riding bikes I guess the one thing I'll have to offer is um, the one of the things that we really like is for our hotel guests to hopefully park once. And when they come into town and we know we have a peak on um, certain peaks related to hotel traffic, and if they can park once and use our trolley or use bikes along the recreation trail to explore our city, um, I think for a long time we've thought that's a better option than additional cars on Lighthouse Avenue or in that area. So I 
can't directly answer your question, but it's it's not a bad idea for for future efforts. And there are some bike counters we could purchase. Well, what I learned from this is that there is awareness of the situation down there, and that, that's really what I was trying to understand. So uh, thanks, Kim. I appreciate that. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, I understand that there's going to be uh, bike repairs and and uh, whatever. Is uh, is is that going to make a difference to the use permit? Uh, no, it's not. Um, I would think that that's part of the the retail use. Okie dokie. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I have sort of a process question. So um, sure. th I'm curious, this, uh, Christy did an excellent job on the report, and but why wouldn't this go to the zoning administrator? It seems like more of a ZA kind of an item to me. I'd be happy to address that issue. Um, due to COVID, um, we have canceled all our zoning administrator meetings, and we hope to um, reinstate those again after we're open and able to have those in person. So right now for simplicity, um, as we were trying to get accustomed to having three boards and commissions all you know, completed via Zoom, um, that was a big transition for our department. And so we consolidated all use permits and variances at the zoning, at the planning commission level. And for example, you recently considered a, a fence variance. Um, we normally wouldn't take fence variances to the planning commission, but you've been reviewing all use permits and variances at okay. your level. Thanks. Other questions? Did Sandy come back to us? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what was wrong, but something was wrong with the iPad. And so I pulled out the old iPad and it works just fine. So well, just thank wanted you. to confirm. Yeah, I just wanted to yeah, confirm. No, I'm back. Back. Appreciate it. Um, I have a I have a question. You spent a lot of time in your report on the the topic regarding dates and parking requirements. Um, from the time that it started, what is the current number of parking spaces required required? For the hotel or for the proposed use? Well, then I'm going to get to the proposal, but up to the current use, when the previous use with a jewelry store and food, what was the total parking requirements then? So the total parking required um, for the original use permit was 558 parking spaces. And for building B, um, that required two spaces so this is kind of just swapping out uses that was you know the retail uses um, are permitted for that use permit so this is another retail use going in um, and it just requires um, 1.5 rather than two parking spaces because suite a and c um, and included originally building b included um, another small area and this is just including um, suites a and c um, so, um, it's basically requiring the same or 0.5 less for this use for building B. If that makes sense. Thank I can you. pull up the. No, that, that's answered my question. Uh, okay. Second question would be in the, in the wording, it was kind of framed with the word typically or seasonal and it looking at two employees up to two employees in summertime. Or should we assume that there would be more employees? Well, it said um, a total of six, but then typical two, I guess, maybe up to six. Um, oh, sorry, I thought I was sharing still. Did the applicant come back online? Did she dial in? I don't see her. Okay. Can't ask her a question then. Um, on this kind of a project, when the hotel says that they can absorb up to six or eight employees, um, 
that's what I'm assuming is what their, their comment refers to. It's, there's no change in a higher number. It's just utilizing existing spaces. Is that correct? Yes. U okay. Utilizing ex existing parking spaces. And the hotel so, keeps track of those. So there's really no change at all in for this use in the number of parking places. Right. And that includes some public parking spaces on the street. Is that correct? There's gonna they're not parking on the the street. They have to the um, the city code requires uh, parking on site or to provide off-site parking with a parking agreement, but they're providing it on site so they don't need a parking agreement. Okay, so that, that doesn't include the the street parking. Right. right. There's no street parking. Thank it's you. Not allowed. That answers my that, that answered my question. So any since we don't have an applicant for, for that, to ask questions of uh, any other questions from the commission okay then let's dis discuss it oh then. before we do that can we open it up for public comment oh, i do I, see I, one I beg your pardon i beg your pardon i got a little thrown right there with the fact that we didn't have our applicant um let's open it up for public comment sarah if you would Sure, absolutely, Chair. So just taking a look, we do have one attendee and I do not see any hands raised at this time, but I will take an opportunity to just share again um, how to call in or join via Zoom. So you can join the Zoom meeting from a computer or phone and you can use the link or phone number posted on the agenda at iSearchMonterey.org. And since the meeting has begun, that'll be found under the recent tab. To join by telephone, you could dial 833-568-8864 and enter our, our webinar ID, which is 161-990-8039. So, and to provide a public comment, just simply raise your hand using the Zoom feature, or if you're calling in by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand, and then star six to unmute when called upon. And just confirming, we don't have any hands raised at this time for public comment, but I will certainly let you know if that changes. Thank you, ma'am. I'll bring it back to the commission and ask for comments. I'd love to make a comment. I'm a frequent user of the rec trail, especially from the Fisherman's Wharf to Asilomar. This is an ideal lo location for this business. About a month ago, we went uh, to get a cup of coffee right there at the edge of the Portola, at the Plaza Hotel. And I was shocked at the absolute super high quality of the bicycles that they are selling. At that point in time, they had not opened it up for bike rentals. And they were selling these high, high end electric bikes and regular bikes, but, uh, there really isn't a bike rental place in between Fisherman's Wharf and further down. There may be a bike rental closer to the aquarium. I'm not aware of it, but I think this is a pretty good use for, for this location. Um, and it's close enough to the kayak rental that people who are guests of the hotels in that area have a big choice. Uh, it, it's a very well-run business and very attractively presented. Thanks, Andy. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, I, so, a, could we get a second? Sandy, did you move approval? I don't think she moved approval. I was just making a comment. Oh, so then far. never mind. I'm sorry to interrupt, Commissioner Latassa. Please proceed. Oh, actually, I was going to make a motion. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's, it seems like a really straightforward application, just swapping uses, not dissimilar uses in this space, and it seems very appropriate. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to uh, prove um, the uh, permit amendment 21-0012 at 400 Cannery Row, as submitted. It. I'll second that. We have a first and a second. Let's have a... Any other comments? I agree with Dan that, uh, and it, it's, it's basically anecdotal, but even from other commissioners, that the, the number of bikes along the rec trail is increasing, uh, particularly in COVID. Um, and 
we I agree we also probably need to figure out a way to track how many people are on it because it I know that on NIP they were talking about widening the rec trail in that area Ooh. and that's going to take some good engineering that is probably going to have to be counter levered but uh anyway so yeah they, these are important considerations and what we've been hearing and then there's other issues that arise of seawater rise and so forth how is that going to impact all these areas so this is going to be an issue that keeps coming back to the commission okay if there's no other comments then let's have a vote all right so i got the first from commissioner latasa and the second by vice chair freeman for the vote, we have Chair Brassfield. Yes. Vice Chair Freeman. Yes. Commissioner Dawson. Yes. Commissioner Fletcher. Yes. Commissioner Latasa. Yes. Commissioner Millich. Yes. And Commissioner Reed. Yes. Great. That was unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then let's move on to item number four. And I believe someone will have a report for us. That's correct, uh, Chair, and this is Grant Leonard, uh, Housing Analyst for City of Monterey. And today I'll be presenting with you our Community Development Annual Action Plan. So allow me to share my screen. I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding this, the, the words. Is that better? No. Is anyone else uh, able to hear me? I can hear. Well, I, I shall hear. do my you best. You sound kind of in a tunnel. You're a little echoey, but the uh, PowerPoint is real clear. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay, well, we'll get through this together. It's like you're speaking in a well. Yeah. Hmm. We do feel a little underwater here at times. Um, so the community development block grant program for the next fiscal year, this is our, basically our annual budget and our plan. And so we call it the annual action plan. Uh, first of all, why community development block grants? A great example is our youth homeless shelter here on Pearl street. Uh, a couple of years ago, the city was able to fund a major renovation of that facility, um, which helps at-risk youth and homeless youth. And it's the only youth homeless shelter in Monterey County. And it's right here in uh, downtown Monterey. Community development block grants are also used for home ownership programs and home repair pro programs and um, playground replacement or uh, grants to nonprofits, which we will cover in a moment. Um, so, the main focus of this plan is to support the five-year community development block grant uh, consolidated plan. And we focus on four major areas, which is our nonprofit service grants, our public service grants, infrastructure improvements, such as for CHS, the safe place, the homeless shelter, housing preservation, so that's our grants for our homeowners who are low income, also our First time home buyer program. And then also having a good administration of the city's housing office. And there are certain limits that apply to these categories. Administration is limited to 20% of the total budget, and public service grants are limited to 15%. But there are no limits on infrastructure or housing preservation. But this year, we will be receiving a federal grant our entitlement allocation of 259,829 and we have program income that the housing office earns every year that comes from loan repayments and ground leases that we have through the city and we expect our income to be approximately nine hundred thousand dollars so over the years the city has appropriately invested its housing funds and those are paying dividends which is uh, the majority of our housing budget at this point. 
The first program we'll cover is our public service grant. We fund a variety of services, everything from food to legal services to uh, homeless services. And we also serve uh, youth through uh, several programs, including most recently uh, the court appointed special advocates, CASA of Monterey County. This is the um, list of people who applied for public service grants organizations. We received 12 grant applications this year, totaling a request of $234,000. Uh, many of the grant or agencies were requesting the full amount, $20,000 or $25,000. Uh, the third one, Community Human Services, had two requests one for their standard services, which they request every year, but also an additional 20,000 was requested for the Casa de Notre Buena homeless shelter, which has recently opened in Seaside. And it's the first year round homeless shelter serving the Monterey Peninsula. <coughs> the fourth uh, agency, Copia Home Match, is a new applicant, and they were also requesting the full amount. Uh, the other agencies uh, were existing grantees and they made similar to request what they make every year. This is the recommendation from our grant review committee, which had uh, the planning commission, the police department and uh, uh, planning department staff uh, scoring the applications. Very few agencies received the full amount. Um, Agencies that did were focused on homeless services and providing food services. Uh, the new applicant, Tovia Home Match, received a smaller percentage of what they applied for, just $5,000. Uh, that was to give them um, a start in the area, a little bit of funding so that they could uh, prove their service over the next year and then return for an additional grant uh, thereafter. The major change is at the bottom the 12th applicant, Salvation Army. They had applied solely for rental assistance funding this year. However, the city of Monterey has its own internal rental assistance program. And additionally, the Salvation Army is receiving funding from the County of Monterey and the United Way of Monterey County for rental assistance. So funding them would have been a duplication of funding uh, which we were not able to do. The total recommended budget for this program is 172,000. And that is the full 15% that we're allowed for the total budget. Uh, so we're up to our budget limits and we're able to fund um, every agency with exception of Salvation Army because they're receiving other funds for that program. <laughs> for our public infrastructure grants, we received two applications. One is from the Veterans Transition Center to repair two um, duplexes in Marina, which will serve homeless veterans. Uh, this is an example from 2019 when the city funded a very similar project. And you can see the first photo is an uninhabitable duplex. And then the second photo shows it nearing completion as we uh, repaired that unit. Uh, the second application was from Meals on Wheels, which was to fund outdoor improvements to their senior center in Pacific Grove. That program was not recommended for funding uh, because it was determined to be du a duplication of what was offered within the city of Monterey from our own senior center. So again, not something we could fund. However, the Veterans Transition Center was recommended for funding. Our third program is our standard home repair grants for low income seniors. That's our Mr. Fix It program, our home accessibility program, and our home safety program. We also have a major loan program for homeowners who may have uh, significant needs, uh, such as a new roof. Uh, we also have our purchase and resale program, which is funded through this, which allows the city to buy back uh, low income housing that's for ownership, repair it, and then sell it to our wait list of low income home buyers. 
And so our budget for these programs is the majority of our um, housing budget this year at 677,000. Finally, the planning and administration uh, will be providing technical assistance to our grantees. We'll continue to work on new affordable housing projects and homeless services. And we'll continue to collaborate with partner agencies throughout the peninsula and the county. And the budget for this is 230,000. Our schedule for this project, we started in December with applications for our nonprofit grants. We had a presentation of the applications in January. Uh, our draft annual action plan was published on the city website, the housing website, and the planning website on March 19th. We're holding our first public hearing this afternoon. We'll hold a final public hearing at the city council on April 20th, and we'll submit the plan to the Department of Housing and Urban Development by May 15th for review and approval. And then starting July 1st, we get to start delivering these programs and projects. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions of Grant? Yeah, hearing none, let's- No, 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 I have one question, just one question, Grant. You know, I know you didn't talk about this, but I have two questions. How does your budget compare this year to last year's budget when I, I don't think the COVID impact was as great? And my second question is, how are you coming along on selecting a, a builder for the Van Buren and Madison uh, low-income housing project right behind the city hall? Okay. Uh, so the first question in comparison to last year, uh, this is actually very similar to what we first presented to the Planning Commission last year. This is our, our standard sort of program. However, by April of last year, with the effects of COVID-19 being felt, uh, the City Council shifted that budget to focus on rental assistance. Um, so that's the major difference. This budget does not include community development block grants for rental assistance. And the reason for that is the city has received 1.2 1, 1, well, 1 million from the County of Monterey and the United Way to provide rental assistance. So uh -huh. that is now a separately funded program. We're still doing it, uh, but it's not funded by block grants. Okay. And then the second question, uh, for our affordable housing sites that the city owns and we're looking to redevelop, uh, we have entered negotiations with First Community Housing for one site located at Adams Street across from the Sports Center. And we've entered negotiations with Mid-10 Housing Corporation for the remaining three sites, one behind City Hall, the Harbor Yard, and then the Cali Principal Parking Garage. Uh, so those are just starting right now, early negotiations. And then we will uh, return to City Council with a development agreement. Thank you. Other, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I mean, um, questions for? Yeah, I, I had a question, uh, Grant. The, so when I uh, read the agenda report, there's a hyperlink, uh, you know, in blue ink, uh, two locations on the report. And when I clicked on that, it's it said directory file dead or something like this in red ink. So there was no actual link. Kim was nice enough when I spotted this um, to send me the actual link. So you might want to clean that up for the um, city, city council. council. Uh, just that the, you know, there, that that's where all the meat is. Cause you know, um, uh, chair uh, Brassfield and I met with this group twice to go over and try to figure out the, um, um, the, the individual grants, for these 13 different groups. And it was really interesting. It turned out the you know, police department, um, Jake Pincus was really sort of led the charge as far as helping us um, make these decisions because he's down there you know, dealing with these issues on the street. Um, so anyways, it was just that the, I, I wasn't able to access the actual 
numbers for these different groups, uh, except the, for the file that, that Ken sent me. That's all. Excellent. Yeah, we'll get that updated. Thanks, Terry. It's kind of ironic that the person leading the charge on grants is named Grant Leonard, but uh, I appreciate always good information coming from Grant. Let's open it up for public comment if we could, Sarah. Absolutely. Thank you, Chair. So I just want to give one more friendly reminder on how you can participate in public comment and share a comment at today's meeting. So if you would like to, you could join the meeting um, from a computer or a phone and use the link or phone number posted to the agenda at iSearchMonterey.org. And then since the meeting has begun, this agenda is under the recent tab. And again, you can join by clicking the link or join by telephone by calling 833-568-8864 and entering our webinar ID, which is 161-990-8039. And to share a public comment, you can simply raise your hand in Zoom using the Zoom function. Or if you're calling in by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand, then star six to unmute when called upon. And just taking a look here, I do not see any hands raised for public comment, but I will let you know if we receive any. Thank you, ma'am. Bring it back to the commission and your comments on this project. So I'll I'll just say a few more words. The, um, I, it's so interesting to listen to the presentations from the individual groups and how hard they all work. I mean, some of these grants are for five thousand dollars, which is a lot of money, but still, you know, in the big picture, it's uh, they really have to work hard for this money. And Grant does such a, a great job of of um, processing this whole complicated thing because it has to be done in this very um very prescribed sort of way by hud it's it's really a very complicated process and he does an excellent job the um uh, one of the comments we heard most from these various groups was how much they appreciate the city of monterey because i mean if you look at other cities around here we're kind of the most generous one for all these groups. You know, they, they do get money from other cities, but we're the only one that really has this active of a grant program like this. So um, CBGB is a great Monterey uh, project. Thanks, Terry. Any other comments? I have a comment. Go, Go ahead, Mike. When I first went through it, I didn't see anything for the veterans. And, uh, and so I, I said, wait a minute, you know, I went back through it again and oh, there you are. <laughs> because uh, uh, we've, I've done this, I've done this exercise several times now. And, uh, and I, I always like to, to make sure that the veterans are taken care of. So uh, there you go. Thank you, sir. Any other comments or a motion? Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the item as submitted. Recommend. We have a first and a second with Latasa and Reed. And I'll second Oops. it. Fine. A second. So can I have a vote, please? Thank you, Chair. I always appreciate when you uh, repeat. I'm usually talking. I'm usually typing still when people are making the motion. So I appreciate that. Uh, for the vote, Chair Braskill. You are yes. first. Vice Chair Freeman? Yes. Commissioner Dawson? Yes. Commissioner Fletcher? Yes. Commissioner Latasa? Yes. Commissioner Millich? Yes. And Commissioner Reed? Aye. Thank you. That motion is unanimous as well. Good. Thank you, ma'am. I believe the last thing up is uh, Kim talking about future planning commission issues. Thank you very much, Chair Brassfield. Just really quickly, um, a recap um, from the last council meeting. The council did accept your recommendation on the CEQA thresholds that you recommended for vehicle miles traveled. Um, so we have an adopted policy now that we will be able to use, and I appreciate that. Um, we also had a really interesting presentation from the Association of Monterey Bay Area Governments 
they received a grant from our local energy provider, 3CE, to update the greenhouse gas inventories for the various cities. And what it shows is because of our city's commitment to 3CE, which um, sources our electricity from renewable sources, we've just about met our 2030 goal. We have a little bit more to do, but not much. So, you know, we're about nine years, if you will, ahead of schedule. But I think what's on the, the horizon that's gonna be completely challenging um, for us is the 2045 or 2050 goal for the, to meet a, a previous governor's order for um, no increase in greenhouse gases. And to, so to roll it back. And it's clear that we're going to have to work on two main sectors was reported. One is transportation. And obviously the conversion to an electrical electric vehicle fleet, maybe for many, many people might help that. But also this issue of vehicle miles traveled is gonna be critical in meeting our greenhouse gas goals. In addition, there was a concept presented um, and some cities are already starting to adopt this, but the transformation from natural gas in your home to maybe power your um, ovens and your water heaters by transferring that or changing that to the electrification of those appliances. Um, natural gas was really identified as a um, high contributor to greenhouse gas um, levels. So, it's interesting that those were laid out as two potential uh, major issues that we'll be dealing with um, for you know the next three decades as we <laughs> try to meet our, our state goals. Um, we also presented our general plan report and we have to submit that to the state of California. Um, so I guess just the takeaway for me is we did see our only housing construction we really saw that was produced was accessory dwelling units and there were a total of 13 housing units built in the city of Monterey last year. And so the real focus of the report was that without a water supply, we will continue to um, have significant hurdles in meeting our housing requirements from the state of California. Um, on the horizon, um, tomorrow we have a council is having a study session and the city attorney is gonna be presenting um, various issue on the Brown Act and conflicts of interest. Um, so we've invited all of our commissioners to attend. Um, all of us will be attendees and, um, you know, just general attendees. So you'll have to raise your hand if you have a question, but encourage you to do that if you so desire. Um, we have a couple items on the April 13th <laughs> meeting. I will be on vacation for that meeting. So Fernando Riveri will be um, managing that meeting for the planning office. And that concludes my report. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions of Kim? I've got, I've got a typo on uh, packet page 16. We're, we're appealing the PC to the PC. <laughs> really? It's probably, probably not allowed. <laughs> Look at that. Like a dog chasing his tail. Yeah, yeah. But well, what happens when he catches it? Yeah. I'm sorry, did you say packet page 16? Packet page 16, one six. Thank you. I will check that out. Sorry about that. Don't be sorry. Oh, thanks for catching it. <laughs> Interesting dilemma. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I, any commissioner comments? general type yeah go ahead steve um we're all in favor of uh eliminating greenhouse gases and uh, uh i just read something recently that uh, posed some concern to me and that is where is all our electricity coming from to take care of a future electric usage and uh, it's something to to worry about because we uh don't have the, the present ability to become an electrified uh, society. Here, here. Any other comments? I have a, a one. I have a solar farm here, and uh, and I've got I've got I don't know how many 
hundreds of thousands of pounds of CO2 saved, how do I sell that to somebody? So if you're doing net metering right now, right. so you're getting compensated for that electricity and it goes back into the grid. So oh, I know that. So I know that. that's, are you saying personally sell it? No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about uh, all that CO2 that I've saved in that uh, you know, doesn't seem to have a home. Get a bunch of Tesla batteries in your garage and give them to the neighbors. I've got two Tesla oh. batteries already. <laughs> and the neighbors are, are, are uh, lobbying for me to throw a, throw a, a cable across the fence. <laughs> so, so they can share. <laughs> Any other questions or I mean comments? My only comment goes along with what Steve said. I recently read that uh, when one volcano goes off, all of our efforts for green gas goes out the window or actually up in the sky. Um, so, okay, we need to put a meter on those volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> wear gloves <laughs> having a no nope. government regulation run amok if you ask me <laughs> trying to meter volcanoes <laughs> well <laughs> yeah anyway uh if you would uh, let's uh bid adieu uh let's close the meeting and i bid you all goodbye until next time au revoir Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.